when you've had a really bad defeat in terms of football, being so early in the season, the best thing about it is, before you know it, another match is round the corner. So after getting beat on Sunday, come Wednesday, you've got a, an opportunity to redeem yourself. Of course, this is Tottenham. So of course our opportunity to redeem ourselves comes against Manchester City. Now that sounds like a daunting task, right? Man City win everything. They're just smashing everybody. And their second string can be better than a lot of teams' first string. But you've got to remain positive. You've got to start thinking about playing your game, doing your thing, and believing that any team can beat any team on their day. And we, we see that. We see that happen. Everyone was expecting Tottenham to win on Sunday. And of course, we didn't. We played poorly. We wasn't up for the fight. They had a, um, a game plan, which they stuck to. And we were poor. And we couldn't compete. And we couldn't get across the line. We couldn't play our football that we needed to play. Now, Man City are going to be a different proposition. Man City like to play football. They like to attack. They like to press. And they like to move the ball quickly. And then there is the potential that that gives us the chance of trying to play our football. The big question, well, two big questions. Is Pep Guardiola going to be um, true to his word? and play a weakened team. And when I say weakened team, this is still a team that's capable of challenging for honours. So that's not going to be an easy, that's not going to be an easy ask. But the bigger question on that is, what's Ange going to do? He put out our, technically our strongest 11 out against Palace. And so we've now got a game kind of four days later. How do we, how do we um, ensure that we are giving everybody game time at the same time as keeping everybody fresh and, and not overexerting? So we know that Sun is injured. Um, and we know that Oda Bear has had a serious setback. So that kind of leaves us in the left-hand side, back with Timo Werner, who's having the worst season of his life, and Mikey Moore playing, you know, his third start, one off of the other. That, I guess, is the big question. Who does it go with? Personally, I think he's gonna go with Werner. I think, He's got Premier League experience. He's been playing, a, a, you know, a lot more. He, he's got that, you know, pedigree as such. I can't see him uh, over-utilising Mikey Moore. So that's question number one. You've then got to say, well, what does he do about the rest of the team? And I think he will still go with a fair few changes to give those players minutes and keep them fresh for the next round of games that are coming. Because listen, you've got Aston Villa at the weekend, tough game. Then you've got Galatasaray, another another tough game. So he's going to want to utilise all the players that he has um, available to him. So I think we could probably see the return of Dragusin for probably Romero. That seems to be the thing. I can probably see Ben Davies coming back in for Van der Ven. Udogi, maybe he'll keep Poro. Although, you know, Gray has not done too badly 
in the matches that he's played for an 18 year old for 40 million. But then I guess it's around who is he going to go for in midfield? Will he continue with um, Bergval or will he go with Madison and Kulu? Will he go with Bergval and Kulu? Will he bring in Benton Core? Will he persevere with um, Bissouma? I personally think it's going to be Benton Core. I think he'd probably go with Benton Core, Saar and um, Bergval. Um, and then I think um, probably Richarlison. Richarlison leading the line. And I think I could probably see if he doesn't if he doesn't go with Werner, I could possibly see him um pushing Johnson to the left and Kulu to the right. Um or Richarlison playing in that in that left side. But my gut is still saying to me that it's gonna be Werner. He's going to play with Werner. And by all accounts, talking to the guys on Shoot the Shit um, last night, they said that, you know, he didn't play particularly badly in the in the minutes that he had against Palace. Actually created a couple of opportunities. I didn't see it, so don't shoot the messenger. So, you know, and we saw the, you know, we talked about it. But we saw the cross that he did for Mikey Moore um, midweek. Um, and the the chance of getting on that one on one if he just had that confidence, so I think Ange will still see that. But again, this is going to be a very very difficult game. There is talk on social media and in the and in the normal media about Ange being under pressure. I personally don't see it. I, I don't think the club are expecting too much this season. I think if they can get to top four, he'll be, they'll be over the moon. I think if he maintains Europe, that will be a, a key milestone. Getting um, far in the Cups, I think, is a, is a priority. It's just sod's law that we've come up against the best team in the, co in the competition so early on. But better to play them early than it is to play them when they're literally within touching distance of it because... They know how to win. So now's the time to play them, really. So I don't think he's under pressure. I think it's all media talk. I think the media love to stir up that trouble. And I think, obviously, from a fan's perspective, most of us are just frustrated as hell. Because this isn't just about this season. It's about all the seasons preceding it, going all the way back. And when we talk about back in the 2000s when we won a cup and all the rest of it. But it goes back deeper than that. And I've said this a couple of times. We haven't been great since the 80s, the early 80s. And so there is a lot of frustration in and around fans and desperation for us to actually be successful because we're the ones, you know, carrying on that legacy, um, getting the abuse, getting the aggravation, feeling the embarrassment and, and all the rest of it. That, that's what it's like. And all, all fans feel that. But, I mean, when you're getting bantered by clubs of one bugger all in less, you know, further back than you, I mean, I get bantered from Southampton fans, which is highly comical. Um, but it's all just being played out by the media. It's all just to stir up that narrative that they want. So you kind of have to be stronger than that. And, and like I've said I'm just concerned if we if you if you move away from this plan because I think they've got a long term plan here. We've tried umpteen short term bloody options. We've tried proven managers and not back them and and all the rest of it. We've got to a point now where something needs to change. The club needs to do something, and if doing something means persevering with someone and riding out the difficult time in the belief that he will bring success, then that seems like the most logical thing to do. And I think that's probably where the club are. And I think that they will continue with this, certainly till the end of the season to see where we are. Did we get far, far in the Cups? Did we push hard? Did we get Europe? Did we get Champions League? There's too many unanswered questions. 
And listen, getting into those top four spots is a difficult ask. You've got Man City, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, you know, even Newcastle, even Man United, if they get onto a good run. Those teams have been in and, in and around that top four for so long that it, it makes it difficult for anybody else to break in. You're really relying on them to have poor seasons and for you to have a great season to really get in there. Of course, I, I just, I've not mentioned Aston Villa, who are also emerging and doing, doing really, really well. But again, they're in Champions League this season. Is that going to detract them for their, for their um, Premier League for their Premier League um, status uh, of, of, of how far they can push that. So it's difficult. It's a difficult league. Anyone can beat anyone. But tonight gives us an opportunity to go another step forward because we haven't progressed in this competition for so long. So getting the chance to, to beat probably the best team in the competition and go forward, well, that, that, will, mean, that will mean an awful lot. The Carabao Cup doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, to a lot of clubs. For a, but for a club like ours, it means a lot. It's a big deal. But if we go out tonight, we'll be going out to the team that will probably be in the final, if not the winners. That's what I truly believe. And I think the club will understand that and Andrew will get a pass for that. May not get a pass from the fans, but that's a different story. And as I've said in a previous video, I've just launched the option of have your say, where you can send me your video of how you're feeling, your match reaction, your feelings about how you, you feel as a Tottenham fan or, or, or about Ange or whatever it might be. I'm happy to kind of look at those and try to put something out there for, for others to, to see how... Um, widespread that feeling is and, and to give you the the chance to um, get some support from other people or or get your your view challenged or changed maybe but we'll see we'll see if that even works but anyway for tonight i said it um, already um, on a couple of other streams i'm going for a 2-1 win for spurs i think it'll be tough i think it'll be tight i'm expecting a reaction but I am expecting changes and I think that's going to make it a little bit harder. But listen, these players are not fringe players now. They are part of the squad and they are Angie's squad. They're players that he's picked apparently. So if he's picked them, he's got to believe in them. So listen, we'll sit and watch it tonight. We'll cheer them on because that's what we do. We're Tottenham fans and hopefully we'll come away uh, with the win and we march on to the next round and that will be great. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Up the Spurs.